Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Favi, and welcome to Arrows DIY. On my channel, I like to create Dollar Tree DIYs, high-end dupes, thrift flips, and the occasional trash to treasure. Always on a budget. This is another episode in my fall series, and I'm so excited to show you guys what I've been cooking up today. These DIYs are super easy to make from Dollar Tree items, and I hope you enjoy. I got some double-sided decor today, some neutral farmhouse decor, as well as some colorful decor. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit that bell so you don't miss a video. All right, let's get started. So I got this cutting board sign at Dollar Tree, and I've only found one, so you know I snatched it up. And what I want to do is I want to use this technique that my friend Mary Beth at MB Gray Designs uses and it she does this to take off the paper on one side now it is a little tedious so you could skip this step altogether if you don't like this um, but you basically just want to use paper towel or I'm using wipes here because I have five children so I have wipey I have a I basically have stock in wipes so basically I'm just going to lay this down you could use wipes a towel anything damp and just leave it on there for a long time so that the paper gets nice and soggy now I'm gonna use my favorite scraper from the Dollar Tree I got it at the baking section and I'm just gonna scrape off all the paper that way we have a nice clean surface on both sides like I said you could totally skip this step if you don't want to do this honestly by this point I didn't want to do this anymore <laughs> but now that it's all done, honestly, I think I would do this again. I think it's worth the effort, but it does make a mess, so just FYI. All right, so once everything was nice and clear, we have a good surface. I'm gonna use this Mod Podge in the hard coat, and I'm just gonna give this one good coat of Mod Podge. Now, I'm gonna let the Mod Podge totally dry, because a sweet subscriber in my last video told me that this is a, um, this is basically like a Mod Podge method for no wrinkles. I'm going to be using the 2023, the new farmhouse calendar from Dollar Tree. I'm actually offering that up in a giveaway. So all you got to do is comment below whatever you want to comment. Just leave a comment below and you're entered into the giveaway. Now, I am fully aware that there might be some Canadians watching and I'm totally fine with sending you guys some calendars as well because I love my Canadian peeps so all you got to do is leave a comment below uh, the giveaway closes on the 1st of September and good luck so using this calendar page from the Dollar Tree I'm just gonna pick this one it says give thanks and I think it's beautiful with the for the fa fall aesthetic I'm gonna go ahead and center it to this cutting board now I'm gonna use this trick that my sweet subscriber told me in my last fall video I feel like I need to redeem myself <laughs> because I didn't do it right. So once the Mod Podge is nice and dry, and dry, we're gonna go in with some parchment paper and an iron. Now this is the best way I've seen to get no wrinkles on your projects. So I can see why my subscribers were raving about it and letting me know about it. So thanks guys. I love when you guys leave me tips and tricks because I'm always, I'm, I love trying new techniques and I, I really appreciate it, so thank you. So once that was nice and flat on there, no bubbles whatsoever, so nice, I went in with some sandpaper and just sanded off the edges after I trimmed them down. Now I'm gonna go in with these window cling stickers. I know they look super cheap, but we're gonna upgrade them big time. I'm gonna use the back of this cutting board sign, and I'm just gonna put the stickers on in any arrangement. I chose to put them like this, and I actually chose to layer them as well to create some depth for our piece today. So as you can see, I have the pumpkin in the center, then the gourd. Now this leaf I put right next to the stem, and that's going to give a 3D effect once we paint it and uh, add some antiquing wax. So now I'm going to press everything nice and firm. You could add Aileen's Tacky Glue if you need more security on your project. I do not use hot glue because it will melt your stickers. So I'm going to go in with this chalk paint in the color Sheepskin. 
and I'm gonna give this all a really good coat. Now, I want this to look rustic and uh, distressed, so I'm gonna give it a rough coat around the edges of the cutting board. I just love the way that looks. It's very farmhouse to me, some kind of French farmhouse, and I just, I just love how that looks. So on your project, if you don't like distressed looks, give it a solid coat of paint. And that's all I'm doing. I'm gonna paint the edges as well as give the stickers themselves about two to three coats. Now, I give it that many coats because we wanna cover the glitter that's bordering these stickers. So once I finish with that, I go in with some antiquing wax. I take the majority of the antiquing wax off of my kid paintbrush here. I got this paintbrush at the Dollar Tree as well, and it's my favorite for distressing. Once the majority of the antiquing wax was off of the brush, I lightly, barely touch this piece. And I just rather build the antiquing wax this way, because you could always add more, but you don't really want to add too much. Now, it's up to you. If you like heavy distressing, hey, do what you like on your project, you know? Do you. It's your project. But I wanted a nice, faint distressing. So I feel like it looks a little more expensive when it's faint touches, just to give some class to this project. Now, I went a little heavier on the sections in the middle of the leaves as well as the stem of the pumpkin. And I did leave the, ch the chalk paint a little bit wet. That way it gives me some grace for blending the antiquing wax. If I add too much, it allows me to take some off. And I just pounced on the antiquing wax very lightly in certain sections. Here I'm giving you a close up so you can see exactly what it looks like. And once I was happy, I turned this board over and I painted the handle again in the same sheepskin color but you could totally use any color you like once that was dry i went in with the antiquing wax only around the handle i don't know why i did not distress the entire board just the handle i don't know why i just that's what i felt like doing <laughs> so i always create from the heart and i welcome you guys to subscribe join us it's totally free and i would love to have you Leave me a comment below if you're new here. I would love to meet you. I love talking to you guys. So I found these tags at Dollar Tree and I think they look so expensive. They're leather and they hold up really well to the high temperature glue gun. The high temperature hot glue, sorry. So I'm just wrapping it around, trying to do it as neat as possible, uh, keeping the leather very flat all the way up this handle. Now on the back of the sign, well, whichever one you're looking at. I chose to cover the little dot at the top of the calendar page with this pumpkin. So I hot glued it right on top of that hole from the calendar page. And now I'm just gonna wrap this around, cutting off any excess at the edges and just trying to keep it as neat as possible so that it does have that high end look. I love the texture that this leather adds and I was so excited when I saw, that, saw this at Dollar Tree. Now for the leaf, I kind of wanted it to hang there, but I ended up changing my mind a little bit and curving the leaf so that it kind of gives a 3D fall effect. But here it is, let me know what you think. I think it's so cute. It's gonna look so good with my other farmhouse decor. Now this is part of the Hello Gorgeous Pumpkin Flip Collab. Now a whole bunch of us got together to give you some fall DIY inspiration. So we have Moxie DIY in Java, who's Michelle, as well as Ellie from DIY House to Home. We have Sandra from DIY at the Schwowen's Nest, as well as Sarah from B Sarah DIY. And we cannot forget Emily from Farm Charm Chic. Now these ladies are so talented. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss this playlist. So click the link in my comment box below. I left the link for you for more DIY inspiration we're all gonna be showing you pumpkin transformations as well as some gourd projects. Now, speaking of gourd projects, I'm gonna be using this thrifted candlestick. And I love candlesticks, oh my goodness. It's like my addiction. I am obsessed with all candlesticks. So if you're new here, let me know if you love candlesticks because I love them. So I'm gonna use this thrifted crystal candlestick as well as this little uh, bud vase from the Dollar Tree. I thought it was a very interesting shape 
and I'm just gonna hot glue them to the candlestick using some E6000 as well. Once that's fully secure on there, I'm gonna take this little pumpkin, this foam pumpkin from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna cut a circle under it. Now this circle is one inch wide in diameter, as well as one inch deep. That way it fits perfectly on top of this bud vase. And I don't know if you've guessed it, but I'm trying to make a topiary, something fun for my Thanksgiving display. Um, it's gonna go perfectly with some turkeys that I made last year for my table. So I can link that video if you wanna see what I made for the my Thanksgiving decor last year. So once I got that hole cut out, I'm gonna go in with this French linen and it's a chalk paint and it's so pretty. So I'm gonna go in and give this pumpkin about three coats, but I'm only gonna show you one coat because ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just give this entire pumpkin three coats. Now, once that's drying, I'm gonna go in with this terracotta paint. It gives an amazing texture and the color is called Pueblo. Now this is the same color I painted my turkeys last year. So I felt like it would be cohesive for me to add this to our little gourd display. Do you guys see the gourd? I hope you guys see the gourd. I know I'm a little kooky sometimes with my decor, but I love having fun. I love getting creative with budget friendly DIYs. So I'm gonna paint this particular piece in this terracotta color and I'm gonna build different colors and just have a lot of fun with that. So as you can see, this is the environment that I work in. <laughs> My little boy's right there. All right, so now once that's fully dry, the French linen paint is dry, I'm gonna go in with this moon yellow color. And I just love the way these two colors look together. So I'm gonna go in in all the grooves and just, I mean, just roughly accentuate the grooves with this yellow color. I just love the combination of this yellow with this gray. I know it's kind of crazy. You could totally pick any colors you like. I just like pops of color with neutral decor. Every room of my house is a different aesthetic. I have farmhouse decor, shabby chic decor in the bedroom, farmhouse decor in the living room, sometimes in the kitchen. I mean, my, my, my decor floats around my house. So you'll always see some colors with some neutral pieces. Now to help this pumpkin look a little more natural, I'm gonna go in and dry brush some more French linen while the yellow paint is still wet. And that's how it looks. It helps blend it and not let the grooves, not let the yellow in the grooves look so harsh. It softens the entire pumpkin. Helps it feel more natural. Okay, I think you get the point. So now I'm gonna go in with this little tiny pumpkin from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna mix my own color. I wanted to have kind of like a bluish, like a turquoise green. I don't know. I just mixed the colors together, Midnight Garden with Clover. And I wanted like a bluish, I don't know, that's the color. I don't know how to explain it, but that's the color I was going for. I wanted it to be natural, but interesting with farmhouse flair because this is kind of like anyways I just wanted to make it look like a fun pumpkin so I give everything one good coat I have quality control here making sure that everything is painted to standard and he approves he says that the colors are good now once this is dry I'm going to go in with the color succulent it's like a light light green it's beautiful and I paint all the grooves and I spatter some on the little tiny pumpkin. Now I'm gonna go in with this brushed metal paint and I'm gonna paint the base. I want the base to look galvanized. So I'm gonna give it two good coats and let it fully dry. Once the candlestick is fully painted in this brushed silver color, I'm gonna go in with these three colors. The first color is the same brushed silver by Folgart. The next color is this color called uh, sequin black. It's like a sparkly black. And then I have a medium gray. Now this is gonna help me add the galvanized look that I want for my candlestick. I start with a very crispy, chippy brush. <laughs> my friend Brandy from 
the DIY struggle calls it the crispy bits. It just helps add texture to your paintbrush. So this paintbrush is super old and crispy. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna start off with this medium gray color and just dab it on. No particular reason, just wherever you want. I want a specific look. So you just keep dabbing it, kind of like you're stabbing your piece with a paintbrush. Is the best. Just pounce your paintbrush. You don't wanna, you don't wanna swirl your paintbrush. You wanna dab it on there to give that galvanized texture. Once I was happy with the amount of medium gray on there, I go in and I do the same thing with a little tiny bit of black. Now this black, I take the majority of the paint off the paintbrush and I go in and I pounce it, just like I did with the medium gray color. This is a lot of fun to do. If you've never done this, I recommend you do this. You can use any paint you have on hand, as long as it's black. It doesn't have to be sequence black, but that just happens to be my favorite color in black it has a little bit of shimmer in there and I think it when the when the light hits it it kind of gives more of that metal feel in my opinion okay so I just go in and I as you can see I add some brushed metal then I add some black then I add some gray and I just alternate until I'm happy with the look once I'm totally happy with the look this is what it looks like and then I want to add some rust to it. So I'm just going to add some antiquing wax to the same paintbrush, dab it off a little bit, and just randomly put it on the edges as well as some of the raised parts of the candlestick. Not too much, but just enough to give it a little bit of that farmhouse rustic feel, which I love so much. So that's what it's looking like. I think it's super cute fun for sure I love making fun decor because my family loves it and I love it so that's what we do in this house okay so I kind of messed up the terracotta paint so I'm giving it one more coat in the same terracotta color and once that's fully dry I'm gonna go ahead and stack all of the pumpkins now to help this look a little bit more organic I did add some antiquing wax to this butternut squash slash gourd creation. I know it's outside the box, but I like think I like making different decor. I like you're always gonna find something new here. Something kind of crazy, you know, but I really like it. I don't know, I can't explain it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead with this E6000 and I'm gonna add some to the hole that we made at the bottom of this pumpkin. And I also add some hot glue for that temporary long-term hold. And I'm just going to stack it on top of our butternut squash. Now I'm going to add the little tiny one after it dries. I'm going to add it like so. Now I do go back and add a toothpick for more stability and some more hot glue. But that's how it's turning out. I think it's so cute. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now to add some more cuteness, I took some jute twine and I wrapped it around my fingers. I wrapped it around two fingers to be specific. And then I uh, tied off one of the edges. I tied off the loop, sorry, with a double knot. And I'm sorry if you hear my kids, they're here. They're always here. <laughs> I'm a mother of five and I DIY on my spare time. So I would love for you guys to join our crafty family. All right. So now I just cut off that loop and made kind of like a shabby, crazy bow. And I love it. I love the wild nature of it. And now I'm going to make a little tiny bow, just a simple little bow um, using the farmhouse ribbon from Dollar Tree. And I'm running out of this ribbon and I'm so sad because I love this ribbon. I love this ribbon so much. Okay, so I fluff it up and then I hot glue it right at the top there, the center of this and I think it just seals the cuteness. Let me know what you think in the comments below because I, I really love this piece. I know it's crazy, but it's all right. It's crafting. Have fun creating your home decor. Now to bring the twine to the bottom of this candlestick, I wrap the bottom a couple times with some jute twine to help with that rustic nature. If you don't like these colors, you could totally use any colors you like, but um, these colors exist in nature. so. FYI. Let me know what you think though, because I love it. Okay, so this is our last project and we're making a wreath. 
I have this foam pumpkin. It's seen better days, but I'm too cheap to not use it. And on this channel, I love celebrating mistakes. So I'm going to use this pumpkin because no pumpkin goes to waste. And I love pumpkins. I cannot say I have so many pumpkins in this house. Okay. Anyways, I could not find this specific size pumpkin at Dollar Tree. So I had to use this one because I I had a vision in my head and I had to realize it. So anyways, I made a mixture in my last fall video. I'll link that video here if you're interested in more farmhouse decor. But I made this mixture of paint using a red orange paint and a green paint. The same paint actually, the Fiddlehead Fern. I mixed those two together to make an orange color. Now I'm going to go ahead once this is fully dry and I'm going to accentuate the grooves of this pumpkin with this Fiddlehead Fern color. And I just think it adds a beautiful depth and it kind of looks like the pumpkins in Kirkland's. If you've seen the pumpkins in Kirkland's, you know what I'm talking about. They're so beautiful and realistic and I love the colors. Oh my goodness. Okay. Once this is fully dry, I'm going to go in and I'm going to dry brush the same orange color on top to help blend all the colors together and help them look a little bit more natural. Now you see that big crater in the front? I'm going to accentuate that because I feel like it looks more natural. I mean, if your pumpkin is too perfect, I don't know. I just feel like it's okay to have a raggly pumpkin. I mean, I've seen them in nature. Okay, so I found these transfers. There you go. Transfers at Dollar Tree. I've never seen this one before. This is happy fall, y'all. I don't say y'all because I'm from the east, but I think it's so cute. So I used it. You can't really see the y'all on this orange color, but it's okay because the font on that happy fall is so nice and it kind of reminds me of the kind of font you would get on a Cricut. So if you don't have a Cricut, these transfers are awesome. I'm going to see if I can pick up another one of these transfers so I can give it in the giveaway with the calendars, the stickers, the decals. I'll post a picture of what I'm offering in the giveaway on my community tab so you guys get all the info and all the stuff. But remember, it closes on September 1st of 2022. And yeah, good luck. I hope you guys win because, I mean, it's cute stuff from Dollar Tree. So I used a craft stick to rub it on. You want to keep it very, very still. You do not want to push down too hard on your foam pumpkin pumpkin because it will crack your transfer a little bit so just use a craft stick be patient do not move the transfer at all keep it very very still and then you should be totally fine if you find that a piece of your transfer comes off if you find that a piece of your transfer does not transfer properly just put it right back where you want it to be and rub it off with the craft stick and you should be totally fine. Okay, so now we're gonna use an 18 inch wreath form. I uh, could totally use a 12 inch. I probably will use a 12 inch because this is a massive wreath and it takes about four hula scoops. Wow. It takes about four hula skirts to uh, fully cover the entire pumpkin wreath wow I have pumpkin on the brain okay so as you can see I'm just sliding the hula skirt underneath the outer edge of this wreath and I'm folding it over the wire the outermost wire and hot gluing the raffia to itself and when you come to an intersection piece there I prefer hot gluing both sides of the raffia first and then cutting it because that way you don't, that way the raffia doesn't slide off the string. It just makes it easier to hot glue both sides of the intersection and then cut the middle, the middle section. I hope you can see what I'm doing. So I do that for the full length of this wreath. And it takes about three raffia skirts to cover the outermost portion. But since this is a, such a big wreath, I say use four hula skirts that way you can fill in any empty spots at the end of this wreath process okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and I cut about 
seven inches in length. I'd rather it be longer than shorter. We could always cut off raffia, but you can't add on raffia. So keep it long for now. And at the end, we'll trim this whole thing. And there is nothing more fun than cutting raffia. Like it was an amazing sensory experience for me. Okay, so now, as you can see, I cut off about a three inch section of raffia, leaving about seven inches on, of length on the wreath. And then I just slide it through the innermost ring and just made a knot. Now these knots are they they are slidable. They they are going to slide around and I like that. That way I can choose where I want to put this as I add the greenery, the leaves, all the fall things on this wreath. Okay. So we're also going to add some floral picks and we're going to slide them into the knots of this. We're going to slide them into the knots that we're making. And I just continue doing this for the, all of the innermost ring on this wreath. It's simple to do and I don't like hot gluing because I like reusing my greenery and I like reusing every year I change my fall colors. <laughs> so I start off very traditional with the colors and as you can see later in this wreath I start moving away from traditional colors. And um, I really like that blue color for the fall. Are you guys into that color for the fall? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so now it's time to add the leaves. So once this wreath is fully covered with this raffia, I'm gonna go in with these leaves. I got a Dollar Tree. I'm plucking off the berries as well as the leaves. I choose not to use the berries because it wasn't really what I was going for. I didn't use the gourd either, uh, but I will keep them close by for another project because nothing goes to waste in this house. We use everything in this house. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pluck all the leaves off. I got two picks that, more, that are more of a yellow orange tone, and then I got two picks that are more of a brown and green tone. And I just like the variety it's gonna to add to the wreath. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and lay them out, spread them around so that the colors vary. I want there to be a brown, a yellow, a green. Brown, yellow, a green. That's kind of how I chose to do it. That way the colors are more even around the whole wreath. So I lay the leaves all around this wreath first and then I hot glue once I like the position of the leaves. Words, guys. Okay, so now once I'm happy with the position of these leaves, I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue them inside of the ends of these knots that we made, hiding the base of the leaf. We wanna hide the plastic because it's not cute to have plastic showing. We want this to look high end, you know, so just cover the plastic on your leaves to the best of your ability. It's okay if a little bit shows, obviously. I mean, there's stems. It's it's fine. Leaves have stems. But, I mean, that middle piece there that has the circle, we want to hide that with the raffia. To the best of our ability. Just have fun, guys. When you're creating your projects, have fun. Don't fuss about the little stuff. I mean, 10, ten times out of 10, no one's going to notice what you're freaking out about you know what I mean okay so I go on and I just hot glue these leaves all around this wreath and I'm loving the movement that the raffia and these leaves are adding to this wreath okay so once we got that down we're gonna add these next picks now this is where I kind of stray from the traditional colors but it's fine I'm gonna be making more wreaths for fall I absolutely love fall so every one of my wreaths is gonna be totally different now, I'm gonna pluck off the tags and I'm going to, again, arrange them first before I hot glue them. I'm gonna, I usually like adding specialty picks in threes or fives. However, I found four of these picks at Dollar Tree, these blue picks with the white, with the cream pumpkins. So I'm gonna add all four to this wreath. I add them on by sliding the stem into the knot that we made. And then I take the 
bottom of the stem and I wrap it around the innermost, the middle. I basically wrap it around the innermost wire as well as the middle wire that's in the in between. You could also use zip ties to secure this a little more, but honestly, the wire in the at the base of this stem pick is sturdy enough to hold it. I feel like Dollar Tree picks are a, a lot better quality now and uh, the wire is very, very strong. So if you get this, you'll see what I mean. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain through a video, but I take the stem, I just feed it through the knot that we made. You could also use hot glue at this point to secure it to your raffia knot. Then I feed the stem through the middle of the wire wreath form and I twist it tightly around the middle stem the middle not stem the middle wire sorry guys it's really hard the words right now are not coming to me and I do this in different spots now the pumpkin that we just made with the transfer that says happy fall y'all that's gonna be on this wreath so, I put four of these blue leaf picks equally spaced around, and I'm counting the pumpkin as the fifth special stem. So we're still, we still have five of the specialty picks on this wreath. Because remember I said I like adding in clusters of three and five on a wreath okay so now I'm gonna use these dahlias they're beautiful they have that beautiful cream color that matches the pumpkins and they also have a burlap texture to it that screams fall to me so I'm gonna go ahead and randomly put these dahlias where I feel that the wreath is a little empty I slide the raffia knots we made up or down wherever I need them leaving one section of the wreath empty. And that's where we're gonna add our pumpkin, right at the bottom of our wreath. Now I use other picks that I have on hand, some sunflower picks, and I just take off the pine cones. And I just randomly hot glue the pine cones throughout the wreath. Now I decide to give the innermost part of the wreath a little bit of a haircut. I still want it to feel natural and rustic, but I mean not too crazy right all right so now this is where I want to put the pumpkin at this empty spot at the bottom now to secure the pumpkin I usually would use zip ties it was late I think it was like one in the morning um, so I just opted for twine now it's gonna work fine it's going on my front door like my inside door it's not going outside to the elements if your wreath is gonna be outside you probably want to secure it with more hot glue and more zip ties or cable ties the the pull ties whatever you call them the ties now I found this hardware in my stash and I think it's so nice it's gonna add a high-end look to my pumpkin because we're transforming this pumpkin from a $1 foam pumpkin $1.25 sorry foam pumpkin into a high-end looking pumpkin with this hardware so as you can see I just hot glued it now I'm going to add some cardboard to the back of it, making sure that the twine pieces I added, um, I hot glued to the back, are still exposed. Like we want to make sure that those are free so that we can attach this pumpkin to the wreath. So I just traced out some cardboard. I'm sorry, I, I cannot control the world. I'm in a city. It's so loud. Farmhouse dreams over here. Yes, I wish farmhouse one day not today though so I apologize for the noise all the noises the kids and the traffic okay so as you can see I just cut the shape by tracing the pumpkin and I hot glued it like so be very careful because it's so hot and it takes forever to for the cardboard to stick to the foam pumpkin like I held it forever more 
once it was fully secure on there i go in with this antique gold color by folk art oh it's beautiful i love this color and i fill in the um little gap in the front there to celebrate uh the flaw in that pumpkin and now i'm going to go in and paint the hardware at the top you could leave it brown i mean brown is totally fine i just don't go for brown usually um well this tone of brown in in my hardware in my house i usually go for like brushed gold silvers bronze copper so i'm just gonna paint this uh hardware piece with this antique gold color and i use a little paintbrush and i just keep brushing until it softens the gold color i don't want to see any streaks in the gold paint so i just keep going back and forth with the paintbrush to soften that color okay so now i'm gonna go in and I'm going to use the leaves from the dahlia bush that we used on the wreath. And I'm just going to stick those florals, um, the leaves, I'm sorry, the leaves. I'm going to stick those leaves in the little holes there to kind of help give that wild nature to the pumpkin. And I cut off the excess once the hot glue is fully dry. I cut off the excess cardboard because we don't want to see that. That's not high end. We don't want to see cardboard sticking out of our project. All right, so that's how that's looking. And now I'm going to attach it to the wreath. So I'm going to nestle it in, make a little space for it. And then I'm going to flip over the, the wreath and I'm going to feed it through the two middle wires. And it's kind of like a Where's Waldo, kind of like finding a needle in a haystack. I think using zip ties would be way better but guys, it was late and I really wanted to make this wreath. I love this wreath, I really do. I mean, I think it's so fun and it's huge. It's huge, it's 18 inches and it cost me about $20 to make and this, it's huge. That's all I'm gonna say, it's, it's a massive wreath. Like, it makes a statement. All right, so once I found the twine pieces, <laughs> I tied a knot, I tied a double knot as tight as I can, as tight as I could, in English as tight as I could and then I secured it with hot glue and some more knots because we don't trust twine in this on this channel we have to put hot glue on all the twine twine is rebellious twine does not obey if you love farmhouse you know that twine is wild so I go ahead I double knot everything I add some hot glue and I do that for all three of the ties that we hot glued in the back of this pumpkin So that's how it's looking it's still a little bit too wiggly for me so I do end up adding florals on both sides of these pumpkins the florals I chose are these white sunflower picks from Dollar Tree and I love them I love sunflowers for fall let me know if you love sunflowers for fall I think they're just gorgeous okay so I'm gonna go in I'm gonna take this floral pick I'm gonna bend it so that uh, can curve around the pumpkin behind the pumpkin I push the stem in between in the middle um, of the wire wreath in the middle section of the wire wreath and then I just wrap it around the wreath form in a second I'll show you exactly how I do it with the other stem I add on the other side so you want to adjust your florals and your pine cones in different directions to add fullness to your wreath this is the second pick I'm adding on the right side of this pumpkin and I'm doing the same thing just pushing it in behind the pumpkin uh, pushing it in as far as you can to kind of create tension behind this pumpkin so that it stays put now as you can see I'm curving the wire behind the wreath form wrapping it around going from the outermost wire to the innermost and then to the middle and it's snug it's not going anywhere but like I said you could add any reinforcement zip ties whatever you want add whatever you want to your project um, to, just to make it secure I don't like using hot glue like I said I like switching out my florals um, so that's how I choose to do it but I'm not a professional I'm just a 
a, a, a lady who wants to make a wreath for her home, you know? And I hope you find some inspiration in this video, some ideas that you'd like to try. Let me know what you like in this video. Which one was your favorite DIY? All right, so now I take off these stems, off these tiny cream pumpkins, and I paint them gold to kind of carry the gold throughout this wreath. And I set those aside to dry. While those are drying, I paint these stark white pumpkins that came on the sunflower pick. I paint those in a dry brush, kind of like a dry brush gold in the same antique gold color. And I do that for two pumpkins. On your project, you could totally add more. Now, once everything is drying, I'm going to give this a haircut. And this was so much fun to do. Oh my goodness. Cutting raffia is satisfying. Let me know in the comments below if you know what I mean. But um, I think it's a good time to run to Dollar Tree in the summer and grab these hula skirts because these hula skirts will not be around in the fall. Ask me how I know. So I went and any, even if it's the child size hula skirt, it's better than no hula skirt. To hula skirt or to not hula skirt always hula skirt because it's perfect for your fall decor so now I'm picking some of these pine cones off of the other picks I have at my home and um, I'm just adding them randomly throughout you could also add some more raffia knots around to help fill any empty spots on your wreath and then to cover the hardware at the bottom of the pumpkin and help it feel more finished I did add some of the raffia we cut off to the bottom of the pumpkin to cover the hardware and any cardboard that might have been showing but this is how it turned out I think it's so cute but let me know what you think in the comments below I want to thank you so much if you're still here your family subscribe let's continue this crafty journey this creative journey subscribe it's totally free say hi in the comments I would love to hear from you and I would love to know what's your favorite project today all right, so that's how they're looking. I absolutely love these projects. They're so much fun to make. The colors are so fun, and um, I do love neutral decor as well. If you want more neutral decor, check out my last video. I'll leave it linked right here. And don't forget to check out the other ladies on the playlist in my comment box below. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, God bless. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. If you like this video, here's some others you might enjoy.